I still pay attention to the fundamentals when I'm thinking about the health of the gut. So, um, you know, what, what is, what are the manure scores looking like in the barn? Um, what do our, what do our uh, milk fats look like in the bulk tank? And, you know, if you have access to the de novo mixed and preformed fatty acid assessments to get an idea of how the rumen is functioning, I think like barn side, farm side, those are still some of our best, uh, some of our best metrics to give you a hint at what the rumen is doing. Welcome to the Dairy Health uh, Black Belt Podcast, brought to you by Wisenetics. I'm Luciano Cacheta, faculty at the University of Minnesota, and I have the pleasure to have with me here today, Kirky Krogstad, who is a faculty at The Ohio State University. And we have a very exciting topic today, and we'll talk about uh, room and health. Uh, thank you, uh, Kirby, for being here. Yeah, thanks for having me. How did you get into this field of uh, uh, research? Yeah, um, actually, it goes, probably goes back longer than, than I care to admit. Um, I was actually a student, at, um, I was an undergrad student, and one of my favorite cows uh, died over the weekend when my dad and I were gone and didn't feed the cows that weekend. And so I was like, gosh, what happened? She ended up having this bloody gut episode, and, and I've always kind of been perplexed by... Um, the implications of keeping a healthy gut and a healthy rumen and all the things that go into that. So I think from that moment on, I was always kind of thinking about how do we feed cows? How do we manage cows to maintain a healthy gastrointestinal tract? So from there, the passion was born. Wisenetics turns podcast airtime into brand authority. We don't sell ads. We elevate voices. Curious how far your voice can go to become a reference in the industry and attract more leads? Scan the QR code and discover how we can turn your expertise into unmatched brand authority. Let's transform expertise into influence, starting now. Yeah, looking for the silver lining right into that. Like it's a it's a sad time, but like you're finding how you can uh, make good out of it, right? So you mentioned room and health. So how, how should we be defining room and health? That is, uh, I think that's a really good question. And I think it's one that um, I still wrestle with myself in trying to understand what are the important parts of a healthy gut? So I, the way I think about it right now, and I say right now because I think it will change the more we gain uh, knowledge. The way I think about it right now is uh, a healthy rumen is effectively and efficiently digesting feed, producing VFAs and microbial protein while maintaining its protective barrier function. Um, and so that definition, though, is hard to assess from a research perspective, much less from a field application perspective. So I think it can be an overused term where we talk about rumen health or gut health and just kind of throw it around as a band-aid on any problem we can't solve. But I think um, that's how I look at it or frame the problem at that moment. Yeah, no, that's interesting because I was like going to like ask you, like we're talking this into research and like we have all these tools that we can use at our disposal. We can like do some invasive techniques to collect information, right? And we can have access to can relate to cows even, right? Like to have that for research. On on the practice, on, on the field, like uh, any suggestions or any um, tips for people to how to assess that as a nutritionist or as a practitioner? Yeah, that, that's a good question. I This is one where I, I hope that the research in the next few years generates some more rigorous answers to this. But for the, for the time being, what I usually tell um, practitioners, veterinarians, dairy nutritionists, people that are helping decision makers with ration formulation and bunk management and those things is uh, I still pay attention to the fundamentals when I'm thinking about the health of the gut. So um, you know, what, what is, what are the manure scores looking like in the barn? Um, what do our, what do our, uh, milk fats look like in the bulk tank? And, you know, if you have access to the de novo mixed and preformed fatty acid assessments to get an idea of how the rumen is functioning, I think like barn side, farm side, those are still some of our best, uh, some of our best metrics to give you a hint at what the rumen is doing. Um, and it's my bias as a nutritionist, you know, and I know I'm maybe even in enemy territory speaking to, uh, probably a fair bit of veterinarians, but uh, that, uh, definitely not the case. <laughs> <laughs> we, we get used to looking at what comes out the back end of the cow. And I think that's pretty useful. So, I mean, if you're seeing a lot of undigested corn or undigested cotton or um, things that you don't want coming out the back end of the cow, then maybe that's a time to ask about these rumen health questions. 
Okay. Well, that's good. Like, and I just want to make it clear, it shouldn't be the case, right? Like veterinarians and nutritionists should be working together in the best interest of the animals, oh, right? At least that's every one I was in practice, that was always my perspective. Uh, and I always felt like as a veterinarian, pulling stuff out of the back end of the cow actually was <laughs> giving me like first hand, like definitely not the best way to do it, but like give me some inter- uh, information that I can actually, uh, talk to the nutritionist, like, oh, you know, like in the last few weeks, I noticed this, like anything happened. And oftentimes together, we, we found an answer. And, oh, yeah. and I certainly say that tongue in cheek, but I, I agree. I think it's one of those areas, especially where animal health and nutrition interact requires that joint expertise. You know, as a nutritionist, I get training in how the, the formulated diet promotes milk production and body weight gain and things, but a little less understanding of the pathogen side of things and the the disease side of things where we need to start integrating those disciplines a little bit further to understand how rumen health has implications on all these other markers. Because I know, you know, the the idea of gut health being a starting point for a whole host of other metabolic issues, whether it be um, postpartum inflammation and insulin insulin signaling issues and, and uh, hyperketonemia and these things like perhaps gut health is a, or have perhaps the rumen or gastrointestinal tract is a home for some of that. But even then at this point, that's still just conjecture. You know, we don't have great evidence to say one way or the other that those things are all directly linked. Um, there's some associative evidence, which is helpful, but I think that's why the uh, rumen health and gut health is still fairly nebulous. We're trying to build those connections now about the cause and effect between if we have a barrier function breakdown and how that might be related to generalized systemic inflammation or how that might be related to the incidence of hyperketonemia or how dietary factors like the level of fermentable starch or the type of starch or the size of the forage fiber or the particle uh, particle length of the whole diet uh, um, as an average, you know, how do those things affect the rumen tissue barrier function, the, the hindgut barrier function? Um, it's a really neat area with a lot of, I think, creative questions that could be asked. Yeah, no, definitely. As you said, like a lot of associate, like associations have been described, which it, it's the nature of the beast, right? Like it's it's not that easy, like to to work on this mechanism, understand it, and uh, without being invasive or changing too much of what the cow would do. So, with all the research you're doing, uh, what are the latest? What are the things that uh, people should know? Uh, that you have been studying or being like reviewing from other uh, researchers on this field? Yeah, I think there's a couple of exciting things I've been watching. First, our team has um, my time at Michigan State with Dr. Bradford, and I've continued here at Ohio State in my lab, is we've established that there is a uh, population of lymphocytes or immune cells that are in that rumen tissue barrier, not just circulating through in blood, but that have migrated into that tissue Um, But we don't really know what they're doing yet, whether they have some kind of resolution promoting function or healing function, or if they're there as pathogen detectors. Um, We really don't know what those immune cells are doing, but perhaps they might be part of this gut health playbook that the cow has, you know, how she maintains that barrier. So that's one thing we're working on. And we found a lot of those lymphocytes are actually T cells. Our next step is really trying to characterize what those cells are and perhaps what some of their functionality may be. So that's something I'm really excited about. And we have a, a, an abstract at ADSA on that this this year, next month, actually. Um, and uh, a few other projects plan to try to get an idea of what those ruminal T cells are doing. Um, and then generally, there's some other less rumen focused, but gastrointestinal tract work from both Dr. Penner and Dr. Bumgard trying to understand not only um, intestinal and gut permeability and rumen permeability, but also um, generalized systemic inflammation. And I think what's interesting is Dr. Bumgard did a series of uh, starch and acidosis experiments. And, and they, although they were dramatically changing the gastrointestinal lumen pH, they weren't actually changing any markers of inflammation. And so that's where I think we just don't know what factors really drive the the gut to break down. So it's it's a really cool area to be, to be watching. Yeah, that, that was, th- those are a series of uh, uh, research projects that were very interesting. Like, and I, I, I attended the the defense and like they were saying contrary to our hypothesis we couldn't show this and it was interesting to see right like it's it's a very complex uh topic to be discussing uh i'm glad that we have people like you that's very involved in it and can bring that into some perspective practical perspective so uh thank you for sharing that so 
it, it, there is still a lot to be done, a lot to learn. Uh, any one suggestion? I, I, I heard through the conversation here, like some very basic stuff, like manure scoring, right? Like any like parting words, like on like, world like just like something simple for people to take on from this conversation yeah i think if rumen health or gut health is a concern for producer and nutritionist the best thing to do is just is watch the cows and they'll and they'll t- they'll always tell you um you know i think manure scoring fecal scoring is always going to be a useful tool um getting an idea of what the rumen function is doing for your milk fats looking at de novo things like that is another tool those are probably the two take-homes i, I would uh, give to people if you're thinking about gut health at this juncture well, thank you, uh, Dr. Kirkstead, for your time. Uh, glad to have you here. Uh, this is the uh, conclusion of this episode of Dairy Health Black Belt Podcast. It's presented by us by uh, WiseNetics. Uh, thank you, all of you, for joining us today. If you like it, uh, subscribe to your podcast, give us a like, send us comments. Like Your feedback is very important for us uh, to improve the podcast and also to bring topics that are relevant to uh, all of you. So this is Luciano for the Dairy Health Black Belt Podcast. Thank you. Bye.